coming up? It's gator tagging time at the park. I've made a bit of a mess down here, boys. A rogue gator escapes into the lagoon. Go, 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 go. That's it. Oh, we got him. And I go corralling koalas on Kangaroo Island. Here at the Australian Reptile Park, cranky alligators are fighting for territorial rights, and it's getting ugly. Most of the problems are happening because we've got some younger males that are now full size. They're big boys, and they're trying to overthrow the older males. Now, that can end in some pretty serious injuries and potentially death. When we're on the back of the gator, remember, these big boys, they're a few hundred kilos. If they roll on your legs under, it's going to snap, so keep it out of the way. OK, let's do it. We have to be able to identify who the troublemakers are. But the problem is, in the water, all the alligators look the same. The plan is to catch them and put a white mark on each of their tails. And we'll mark the scales in different patterns. And when they swim, their tail sits proud in the water and we can observe who's doing what. There's a lot of gators in here. To control them all, I'm going to need more manpower than just my usual crew. Lucky for me, the park handyman Dan is around and he's about to get a crash course in alligator safety. It's a baptism of fire for this fresh recruit. All of these females need to go back in the water, but we'll just do Gator 101. The fact is, even though Dan's a builder, he needs some experience in this area. Everyone does, because he doesn't need to know how to catch a gator, but he needs to know how to respond if there's an emergency. Tap on here. That's it. Well done, mate. You can use a little bit of force on the nose, OK? And that'll stop him. You certainly don't get to jump on uh, gators when you're building, that's for sure. But you have to know, once we start this and they think it's feed time, yep. they're going to come three times faster. Come on. Come on. Come on. A bit more. A bit more. Up. The first alligator to be lured out is big. And he's angry. Right oh. No surprise who it is. It's Mr Skinny. He's the oldest and historical dominant gator. Maybe not that case anymore. Good. OK, up, boys. Dan on the rope. Come this side. Mike, you protect us. Oh, a bit more. A bit more. OK, Mike on with me. Obi, watch water. This is a really dangerous situation. OK, we're going to take him to that tree. We've got 40 gators, and most of them think it's feed time. They have one of the strongest jaw pressures on Earth. And we've got the biggest of the big here. Coming. You want a hand? We need to have our wits about us and just be ready for anything to happen. Coming in thick and fast. Oh, listen to that. The plan is to catch the big gators. And when we get them up close, we can individually identify most of them. But what we need to be able to do is identify them in the water when they're swimming around and causing problems. Start from the top, hey? Now, the only way to do that is to mark them, and then we'll be able to observe from a distance and find out who the trouble causes are. But they're all coming in. We have to be really aware, because this situation can go bad really quick. Right, Mike? You are right? You go. Today, I'm using stationary whiteout. I've used paint in the past on other aquatic animals, and the paint takes too long to dry, and I'd have to keep the gators on the bank too long, and it stays on there for years. I'm hoping the whiteout will dry a bit quicker and wear off in a month or so. Here he comes. Over here, fellas. We might catch him here, hey? Gator number two is huge, with an appetite to match. Good. OK, right. Come bring him this way. Swing this way. Watch him for roll. Whoa, hold him. Come on, mate. Again. This is one of the teenagers. And arguably the biggest gator in the lagoon. So we'll mark him now. The boys have decided we'll call him Stonker and we get to watch him over the next few weeks. Stonker doesn't want a paint job and he's letting us all know about it. Just be ready, Dan. He can go any time. He's sucking in the big breaths and that means he's getting his energy back. OK, everyone on. He's going again, he's going again. It's certainly getting cranky now. That's him not too happy with it. I'm on Kangaroo Island, otherwise known as KI. 
a 45-minute ferry ride off the coast of South Australia. It's an island famously rich with wildlife. Like other islands, it's a sanctuary from some of the dangers that animals face on the mainland. Koalas are under serious threat on the mainland, but here on KI, there's too many. And the mad thing is, they're not meant to be here. A booming fur trade in the 1920s nearly wiped out the koala population in parts of South Australia. In one of the country's earliest conservation efforts, 18 koalas were relocated from French Island in Victoria to the protection of Kangaroo Island. A lack of predators and disease have led to numbers exploding into the tens of thousands. They've done so well, in fact, they're putting enormous pressure on the habitat that they and other wildlife depend on to survive. The problem is, unlike kangaroos that will regulate their breeding in response to food availability or good times, koalas will keep breeding, even when conditions get bad. In an effort to protect the island's ecosystem, local rangers have been working hard to try and control the koala population. Team leader Andy has invited me down to show me what's being done. And if I'm lucky, catch a koala or two. What's the situation here? Oh, well, we're re revisiting this property we, we visit every few years. There used to be really good stands of managummers down the river. Some are looking good, some are not looking so flash. That's manna right there. Yeah. That's seen better days. Or it was. And yeah. uh, others looking a bit better. I can see some uh, blue gums that are alive, but all of these dead trees are manna, directly from koala impact. Yep, yeah, that's overbrows from koalas. And how exactly does the koala kill the tree? It'll eventually take so many leaves from that tree that it can't photosynthesise anymore, it becomes a bit stressful for the old tree, and eventually gives up. Some are lucky, their branches may be just hold enough leaves that are out of reach. Yes. But a good majority are we're losing. Yeah. It's not just the tree that suffers from overbrowsing. They provide nutrients and shelter for species like the white-naped honeyeater, native bees, and a host of invertebrates down on the ground. Though it's a controversial policy to some, sterilization of the females has been found to be the best way to control the population. All right, so what's the plan here today? Are we looking at trees or what's, yeah, what's well, this property? Well, we've got a mate, he's out, Torren, he's out looking for animals at the moment. Oh, he's scouting for us. Yeah, right so he's, doing, he's looking high and looking low and seeing what he can find. I think he's found uh, um, a couple of animals for us, so we'll, we'll see if we can catch up with him. We'll give him a okay. call and... I'll follow you. All right, away we go. Found one. Yeah, just at the top of this tree here. Look at that. Small? Yeah, it looks like a girl, I think. Oh, you think? Yeah, I think so. Oh, that's great. OK. Um, we'll try and get a rope over this one's top half and we'll flag, flag her down. OK, easy yeah. as that. Nothing annoys a koala more than a flapping flag. Holding one above their head helps to guide it down the tree. This means we don't have to physically force them down. Safer for us and less stressful for the koala. Righto. Once all the gear is ready, it's time to crack on. Yeah, branches come down, koalas come down. You mean oh, <laughs> there truly are the drop poles. bears on, on KI? <laughs> Occasionally yes. they'll jump. <laughs> to begin the catch, the koala needs to be secured so it can't climb higher in the tree. If the koala begins to stress or climbs too high, we'll have to call off the catch which makes a quick procedure crucial. Yeah, I'll do this. Almost there. Yeah. After a couple of near misses, we got her. With our girl finally secured, all that's left is to corral her down the tree. Beautiful. We've definitely got a little girl. Yep. So you go bottom in first, hey? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well done. Andy and Torren once caught 18 koalas in a day, but anything in double figures is considered a good number. 
all depends on the location. The more managum in the area, the more koalas they're likely to find. One down. One down. Let's keep looking. OK, where do you reckon? There's plenty of evidence of koalas around here. You can see that by the state of the trees. But with nothing left to devour, they've clearly moved on. As well as not being able to provide food for the dependent wildlife, a dead or overbrowsed tree runs the risk of becoming so unstable that it eventually uproots and falls over. This can have a big effect on the habitat. The manigum, does it just live along the creeks and streams? Yeah, it tends to be in the lower flatter areas, like the river flats, the river bends, um, some of the bracken flats. So any dead ones often end up laying on their side, falling over, pulling away side of the part of the bank and soil erosion ends up out in the bay and yep. Yep, uh, we've lost an another big old tree. A fallen tree has a twofold effect. For one, the eroded bank adds sediment to the waterway. Not only that, plants and animals that once relied on the tree either move on or die out. Obviously, these are results that rangers want to keep to an absolute minimum on KI. So let's get back to it. Is this our tree? Yep. Yeah, that's yeah, the one. Yeah. It looks like it must be a favourite tree. A few yeah. leaves missing. Looks like a female. Only one way to find out. Let's go. It's a bigger tree than last time. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. This girl is up much higher than the first. To get up to her, one of us is going to have to strap in and scale this enormous tree. Paper, scissors, rocking here, or are you going up? Oh, we can rock, paper, scissors if you want. Oh, I'd rather if you volunteer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did the last right. one. This is yours. Yeah, all right. Good on you, right. mate. I can do it. <laughs> I've climbed trees before, but I'm pretty sure this isn't Torrin's first rodeo. No, I've done it a couple of times now. How, how many koalas do you think you're up to? I think we're getting close to a 1,000 now, a thousand. so... Unbelievable. Yeah. Just like before, the aim is to guide our girl down the tree. However, unlike last time, Torrin's donning the ropes and heading 15 metres up into the canopy. The process has been fine-tuned, but an accident is always a possibility, and from that height, that could mean serious injury. Yep. Well done. Beautiful. Well done. Uh, definitely a female. Definitely a female, yeah. A bit ratty, but... Yeah, she's an old girl. There's a beautiful, wild female koala. And you can see she's a female. There's no scent gland on the chest. And a little pouch down in the middle. Tried to give you a right hook. <laughs> Ready in the bag? Yep. So the bottom in first? Bottom in first. Yep. Just push her head down a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, good one. OK. Well done. Oh, that was great. How's Torrin? <laughs> you coming? <laughs> OK. Shall we get her back? Yeah, we'll do the paperwork for her and yep. she'll be off to the vets. OK, no worries. She might be a little annoyed now, but within 24 hours, she'll be back in the trees with a clean bill of health. Seeing a wild koala and catching a wild koala is amazing. And whilst I know she's off for treatment now, I realise that this is a part of a bigger picture. It's about the long-term survival of this island and it having healthy and sustainable ecosystems. This is just a part of that. Right to go? Yeah, no worries, Tim. Let's go. The Alligator Lagoon has seen some brutal encounters of late, and I've come up with a plan to nail the perpetrators. Stonker's one of our suspects, and after being marked, he's ready for release. So when it's time to jump off, we've got to do it swiftly and get out of the way, because we don't want to get smashed by his tail, we don't want to get smashed by his jaws. OK. Dan up. Yep, right to go. Mike, back. One, two, three. We've all jumped. Everyone's waiting for something to happen. Three. And Stonker sits there. He starts to head back to the water and we pop the blindfold off. Job done. 
once we know a bit more and we understand who's dominant, who's being picked on, we can then intervene and choose to remove an alligator and put them in a cooling off pond. OK, well, that's two. Let's get number three. That's it. Watch, Bill. Right out. We're on. We suspect that at least two more alligators need to be singled out. But all the commotion is making the animals even more aggressive. Whack it. Righto, let's get up, boys. All hands on. One, two, three. OK, Mike, let's jump. Blindfold. Guys. You got him. Oh, he's turning. He's not as big as Stonker, but he's bigger than Mr Skinny. He needs a name. Malcolm in the middle. Malcolm's telltale battle scars confirm he's one of the ringleaders. This is a minor injury. We've had gators years gone by that have had really serious lacerations from teeth. That's exactly what we're trying to prevent. This is a good spot to mark, down on the tail. And these are scutes. Now, when they swim, they sit high in the water and we can see them. So by marking them in different sequences, we can individually identify each gator. Our newest recruit, park handyman Dan, has been a real asset. This is no job for the faint-hearted. Yeah, they didn't look this, uh, this big when they were swimming in the water, that's for sure. OK, we're going to let him go, yeah. boys. You right to jump again? Yeah, ready, right. Oh, you hold it. Mike, off. Yeah, off. Yeah, that's it, mate. Jeez, he took off. Hey. You right? That's Brutus. Heading away from us there. He's actually chasing that other gator off. With three down, we've left the meanest till last. Brutus is a repeat offender who has a reputation for being a handful. Brutus, a few years ago, was sent to the naughty corner. Three up. We had to catch him, similar to this here, take him out and put him in a cooling off pond for spring and summer. Well, that wasn't easy. Reintroduce him in autumn once it had cooled down. I'll see you later. He's a lot bigger than he used to be. He's grown, not in length, but size. Whoa. I know he used to be a cheeky teenager. I'm wondering now if he's the king of this lagoon. Watch out, boys. Got him? Yeah. Which way are we going to All go right. with it? Let's... Just seconds after we finally managed to get Brutus, the biggest and baddest of them all, he escapes. Plan B is to head out in the boat. Let's go fishing. They're hanging around the edges where it's shallow enough that we believe we can get it a noose underwater and around the gator's head. Then we throw the rope into our mates, hold on for dear life and get him ashore. This situation has escalated. We are now on Brutus's home turf. Rather than the mud. Hold on, hold on, back pedal, back pedal. That's him. We Oh. OK, go, 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 go. We've hooked one. I think it's Brutus, can't be sure. He's given us an awful fight. All I can think about is, Get the rope to Mike. Get the rope to Mike. He's all yours, mate. Let's get in. Right, uh, hang on. We're coming. One, two. OK, that'll do. Biggest by far, hey? We're dealing with a serious gator here. Everyone on. I've made a bit of a mess down here, boys. This fella's been marked everywhere. Righto, he's done. Right. One, two, three. There you go. Not a bad day at the office. That's four court. There is no doubt Big Brutus is the biggest gator. Whether he's the crankiest gator is something we'll find out in the next few weeks. I've been out and about helping with the koala management program on Kangaroo Island. Over the past 18 years, it's proved to be a massive success. Sterilising females has seen the population halve, which has taken a lot of pressure off the ecosystem. The operation is quick and painless. Just an overnight stay and our girls are ready to return home.
That's one happy camper. One more to go. This is her home? Yep. This is right next to her, where she was yesterday. This is the second and last female, and it's time to let her go. This is her home. Come on, darling. Hello. There you go. Oh, you're not sure. There you go. That felt good. A management practice was desperately needed. Another option could have been euthanasia, but I don't like that. This way, she's been through a process and is now back up a tree to live a happy life. I think the method that they're using here is a great result for the future of koalas and the environment on Kangaroo Island.